I'm a tree fruit geneticist at Washington State University and my program is to enable breeders to channel natural diversity into their breeding programs so that their programs can be as efficient, accurate and creative as possible. The work of my program is to translate genetics and genomics discoveries of the genetic factors controlling various traits that are of value to industry and to consumers and therefore to breeders. We enable what's called marker-assisted breeding, or as I like to call it, DNA-informed breeding. So what this is relies on is the development of DNA-based genetic tests that are predictive of trait levels, and breeders can use this to determine the various attributes of the material that they deal with. The genetic tests that we develop are predictive of fruit quality and productivity. I'll use sweetness as, as an example. So we have a genetic test, or we can develop genetic tests, that can determine whether a plant is likely to bear fruit that are exceptionally sweet, really tasty, and really enjoyable to eat, or whether they're prone to, to just be bland. So breeders can use this DNA test then, this genetic test on their material, in multiple ways. There's two main ways that they use this. One would be on their parent material to determine which of their potential parents carry the, the genetic factors for the improved sweetness so that they can then make crosses that are more likely to lead to seedlings in the next generation that carry those desirable characteristics of sweetness in this case. So there's lots of genetic tests that we've developed and are using in our breeding programs. There's genetic tests for, for sweetness, for tartness, for fruit size, uh, for crispness, for firmness, for cell fertility, and for fruit color. Every year since 2010, my program has run genetic tests for Washington State University's Apple and Sweet Cherry Breeding Program. We've run these genetic tests on thousands of seedlings. This particular use of DNA information has allowed these breeding programs to save around about $50,000 per year each on resources that otherwise would have been wasted on inferior seedlings. So with the same amount of effort, these breeding programs are developing even better products. There's a huge collaborative effort that's going on across the US among breeding programs of US rosaceae crops, and this is to enable mark-assisted breeding.